You know, it's probably been in there long enough that the tire will be stretchy enough yeah. that I can probably make it work. No, the valve's gonna be okay. I mean, the, oh, well, maybe it's not gonna be okay. Oh no, this valve is not okay. Hi, I'm Luke, bike shop manager here with Backcountry. It's getting to be riding season here soon, and there's a couple things that most people don't realize you should do with your mountain bike before you get back out on the trails. The first thing is going to be replacing your tubeless sealant. A lot of people don't realize, but tubeless sealant actually dries up uh, over the winter and, and even over the summer as you're riding. So it's really important to refresh that, make sure you have a good amount of fluid in there to plug any leaks uh, as you are riding along. So let's open it up and show you guys how to do it. The first method we're gonna go over, whiskey, can you sit? No, 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 no. Come here. Sit, sit, down. Okay, now whiskey's back in place. Let's dive into replacing your sealant. Uh, the first method that we're gonna go over is through your valve stem. This is the easiest way to do it because you don't have to break the bead of your tire and you create, ideally, very little mess. Uh, we're gonna see how well that goes this time. So the first thing you wanna do is take a valve core tool, then a bunch of different brands make them. This is the Park Tool one, um, and put it on the end of your valve core. Just unscrew your valve core. There's gonna be a good amount of air rushing out here. Put that to the side so you don't lose it. It's pretty small and it'll be a pain to lose it. Uh, the next thing you're gonna do is take your bottle of sealant. This here is the Muckoff sealant. Uh, this one's nice because it actually comes with a hose it's designed to just press onto your valve and squeeze some sealant in there. Some brands don't, but they also make uh, tubeless sealant injectors. So pick up one of those if you need to. So every sealant that you get, you're gonna need to shake. So make sure that you give it a real good shake before you get it ready to put into your tire. And then what I'm gonna have to do here is there's a plug in this bottle that keeps the sealant from going everywhere as you're shaking it. Don't eat that whiskey. I know it smells like bubble gum, but you don't wanna eat it. Then all you're gonna do is take your hose, push it onto your valve. It's easiest if you rotate your valve to the bottom. I'm gonna kind of squeeze the hose onto the valve just to make sure it doesn't leak anywhere. And then you're just gonna squirt a bit of sealant into your tire. When you're done with that, rotate it up. I like to rotate it to about three o'clock. And the reason being is that that puddle of sealant that you just poured in there now is gonna be sitting down here. So it's not gonna make a bunch of mess when you go to pull your hose off. Then take a rag, wipe off any excess sealant, take your valve stem, thread that right back in, and you're ready to reinflate. In terms of the amounts of sealant, it's gonna vary brand to brand, um, but it's pretty impossible to, well, I wouldn't, sh shouldn't say impossible. It's pretty hard to overfill your tires with sealant. I mean, if you put the whole liter bottle in there, you're gonna have issues. But um, generally speaking, um, between three to four ounces for a 29 inch mountain bike tire, you can go a little more, you can go a little less if you wanna save some weight a little more, if you want a little bit more puncture resistance. And the last thing we have to do here is inflate it. So let me get my, we're lucky here and we have compressed air. If you don't, you just grab your hand pump, put it on your valve, and reinflate. It's not a bad idea when you're doing a sealant refresh to kind of overinflate a little bit. Uh, I'm talking into like the 35, 38 PSI range, um, just to make sure that if your tire bead popped off, it's gonna reseat and uh, seal itself up. So that was the first and easiest method to do it. Um, the next method we're gonna go over is breaking the bead of the tire from the rim. And we do this because either you don't have an injector um, or you don't have a uh, valve core tool to remove your, your valve cores. So let's take a look at that method next. Before we get going on this, I'm gonna point something out because I know somebody's gonna say something in the video. I'm putting this bike in the stand backwards. It should be drive side out, drive side in. But the reason I'm doing that because I want it to be easier for you guys to see when I put sealant into this tire. Now we're gonna go over the second method. This one on this particular tire, we'll see how it goes because it has cush core in it. And I need to break the bead on a cush core tire, which is a pain in the ass. But we'll see how it goes. So with any tire, when you're breaking the bead, you're gonna to wanna to have a tire lever with you. So what I'm doing here, normally you'd be using your thumbs, but I'm trying to show everybody, is you're grabbing the tire and you're peeling it back away from the rim and you're pulling the tire away from the sidewall of the rim and releasing it from the bead hook. 
Now we're going to take our tire lever and using all the strength that us mountain bikers have, hook it under there and just release enough of the bead. You don't have to go all the way around, but enough of the bead that you create a little pocket with the tire so you can pour some sealant in there. I'm going to do take our hose and again, let's pour some sealant down in there. This is going to make more of a mess. That's uh, one of the pitfalls of doing it with this method. Now what I'm going to do is rotate this up because like I said before, now that puddle of sealant that I added is down here. So all there's going to be a little bit of a mess. It's not going to be too bad. Now what I'm going to do is with my hands as much as possible, I'm going to roll this tire bead over. And then once I've exhausted all hand strength, I'm going to go back to your tire lever. Just fold that back over. Most sealants dry up pretty quick, so it's a good idea to wipe down any excess before it dries out, because then you're just going to be peeling latex off the side of your rim. And then we're going to do the same thing we just did before. Install our valve core, which I forgot to do. Make sure it's open. Give it a shot of air. You'll hear this bead snap into place. It's going to be pretty loud. Yeah. Shit. It's another one of the pitfalls of doing it this way. Sick. <laughs> I think that's what happened because that was just bleeding air straight out of your drain hole right there. So when I was reinstalling the tire and you push your tire lever in between the tire and the rim and you go to fold it over, sometimes what you can do, which I did, is you can nick the rim tape that creates the airtight seal between the tire and the rim. And usually those cuts are not big enough for the sealant to seal. So this isn't holding any pressure. So unfortunately, we're probably not going to show this to you, but off camera, I'm going to have to take this wheel off and take the cush core out and take the tire off and retape the rim. So this is another downfall of doing the uh, bead off system. So ideally, if you're replacing your sealant, I would definitely recommend getting yourself an injector or getting a sealant that has a little hose on it and just shooting it through your valve core. All right, so first thing you need to do, and this wheel has cush core in it, which makes everything a little bit more difficult, but you got to break the bead of the rim or break the bead of the tire away from the rim. Then, so this is going to make a big mess, but the next thing we're going to do is reach in here and pull our cush core liner yuck out. For those of you who don't know, what Kushcore is, is it's a tire liner that's made out of a super high density foam that is designed to uh, decrease the chance of getting pinch flats if you run lower tire pressure and also to protect your rim. So if you have a really, really hard impact, uh, that Kushcore is going to absorb some of that energy and prevent it from getting transferred into your very expensive carbon wheels. I'll try to clean myself up a little bit here. And then we're going to repeat the same process on the other bead. Pull that away. And then with this side, usually, yep, just push down, the tire comes right off. If you're like the guy who owns this bike and you refresh your sealant, you're going to have a bit of a mess to deal with. Well, that's fine. Let's get a bunch of rags and clean it up. And you can see here actually where the tubeless sealant didn't necessarily get ripped, but you can see it's completely peeling away from the rim. What it does is it exposes the spoke holes where the spokes get fed through the rim when you're lacing the wheel. And then that air just bleeds out of the wheel. There's no way to fix that. So we're going to have to take this tape off, really clean the rim well so there's no adhesive on it and retape it. All right, so 
what I'm doing here is unscrewing this valve so I can replace the tape. And this is not super typical, but it does happen. Sometimes what happens is the valve nut, the threads on the valve nut get kind of messed up either from a pump getting put on and taken off multiple times. Sometimes it just has a bunch of dirt in the threads and you just need to get a pair of pliers on it and slowly work it off. No, the valve's gonna be okay. I mean, the, oh, well, maybe it's not gonna be okay. Oh no, this valve is not okay. I made a boo-boo and I snapped the valve stem. So that's trash. Um, Brad, the guy who owns this bike, ran over to the retail store, which is down the street, to hopefully pick up a new Kushkor and some new tubeless tape. We're opening a bunch of retail stores in the next year or two, so stay tuned for that all across the country. If this happens to you, you'll have a place to go. All right, so what I'm doing here, while I'm waiting for the messenger to come back with hopefully some new supplies, is cleaning all of the liquid and congealed sealant out of the rim. You can see in here, it kind of really gets stuck down in that rim bead. Show the camera. Uh, right in there, that kind of bluish pink looking stuff. And so you really gotta kind of make a corner out of your rag and get in there and scrub all that out. The pro tip for this is patience and maybe a beer. Um, rubbing alcohol always works great but sometimes there's just a little bit too much congealed sealant and a little bit too much congealed adhesive from the tubeless tape to, for the rubbing alcohol to kind of dissolve it enough. And you just need to use good old fashioned elbow grease. So we got some tubeless tape. This rim is 30 mil internal. What I have here is a 28 mil internal tape, which is not ideal, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do two wraps and I'm gonna start on the left side and wrap the left side, and then we're gonna do a second wrap around it, which is fine, and often makes it easier to seat a tubeless tire. I'm gonna go over to the right side, and I'm gonna tape the right side. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna get you bead-to-bead -bead coverage on that rim tape, and it's also gonna get you a double layer protection should you break a spoke and it tries to punch through the rim tape. You can get the right size for your rim. Um, typically what you want to do is go a few millimeters wider than the internal width of your rim. So if you have a 30 mil, try to find a 33 to 35 millimeter tape. And what that's going to do is this extra little curve down here effectively adds to the width. So that's going to take up that and you're going to get a nice even B2B coverage. When you're applying tape, what you want to do is start by the valve hole, which is right here. And you're going to stick that tape down. And like I said, I'm offsetting to one side here. So you're going to notice that. And then you just want to pull it nice and taut. And then use your finger to press that tape down into the internal channel of the rim. Normally, if you want to get a little bit more leverage and stretch the tape a little tighter, which is totally fine to do, you can put it on the ground and pull it tight. Or if you have a truing stand, and stick it on that too. Get that tape really nice and tight. Today, I'm not using either of those things because your average rider doesn't typically have a $300 truing stand. So you can see we've done one complete revolution. What I'm gonna do is pull this tape over to the other side of the rim and start working your way around. You want to be careful not to go up the side of the rim too far. If you go up a millimeter or two, it's not that big of a deal. But too far up, what that's going to do is it's going to make your tire look all wobbly when you get it remounted because it's not going to be sitting straight. And that's it. Overlap the valve again. Get your nice pair of sharp scissors. Cut the edge and just make sure it's stuck down real good. Okay, hopefully we've got a nice airtight rim again. 
Now that we're done twiddling our thumbs waiting for a valve to show up, uh, we got one, brand new one. You need to poke a hole in your rim tape right where the valve hole is to allow the valve to pass through. Any sharp object will work. We just have these little pick tools here. And then take your valve, push it through, and take your new valve nut. If that's not seized onto the valve this time. And just tighten it nice and tight. Finger tight, don't get a tool on it. There's really no need to. You just wanna make sure that that seal around the rim is compressed and locking in an airtight seal. So, after that, to make my life a little easier, is clean the cush core off a little bit. How are we gonna... So we've got the vast majority of the sealant wiped out of the tire just to make it easier to reinstall. Just checking to see where his logos on his tires were on his rear tire to make sure I matched it on the front or on the Maxxis, which is the right choice. So with the cush core, you just have to get the tire on the rim, just kind of over the rim. I'm gonna point this out now because I'm glad that I checked it now. The tire's on backwards. Make 100% sure you mount your tire correctly before you button everything up because otherwise you are going to be swearing up a storm. Almost all mountain bike tires have a rotational direction. There is a very select few that does not, but best check and be careful. So like I said before, we're just wiggling this on until it sits like this. We're gonna put it on our trash bin. And we're just gonna start seating one side of the tire in place. Now I know this looks horrifically messy, but don't worry, we're gonna clean it up later. So the important thing, especially with Cush Core, is what you need to do is take your tire lever and push that bead of the tire down into the center channel of the rim. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna get you more slack to work with when you're folding that last piece of tire over. We're back together. What? I didn't put the sealant in. No, I'm doing it. I'm doing it through the freaking valve. Let's do it the right way. I'm doing it the right way. So, I know we started this video saying there's multiple ways to refresh your tire sealant, but especially if you have tire inserts, just put it through the valve core. It's so much easier. You don't have to deal with potentially doing what I just did and ruining your rim tape and creating a massive mess on the floor, not to mention really sticky hands. You've just got a wheel that's messy and needs to be cleaned really well. So regardless, we have it back together. It is airtight, it's holding air, it has a little bit of sealant in it, but what we're gonna have to do down the line is get a Cush Core specific valve so we can get some fresh sealant in here, make sure it's ready to ride when the weather gets warmer. This is a good time to point something out. A lot of times when you're working on bikes, this is what you end up dealing with uh, we do a lot of really cool, curated, super easy videos. Um, bike maintenance really isn't that difficult, but you do have to understand, even for a pro, things go wrong. And you're gonna have to be able to kind of roll with the punches and come up with solutions from time to time. Now, what I'm gonna do before I put this wheel back into the bike and consider it ready to go, I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit. So we have some bike specific cleaner here. I'm just gonna spray mostly the rim. The tire is, you know, this is, the tire is gonna wear off, you know, as soon as you start riding. The one thing that, to mention is most bike specific cleaners are safe to use on disc brake rotors, but, you know, to be cautious, I'm just gonna avoid getting this stuff on the rotor. And then we'll use my last remaining somewhat clean rag and just clean everything up here. All right, so last thing, we're just gonna drop the wheel back into the fork. Insert the through axle on the correct side. And that's how you make a mess 
and refresh your tubal sealant. If you have any questions, reach out to a gearhead today.